All right, last lesson of uh, chapter three is assessing a regression model. So we've been talking about regression uh, lines, and now we want to see, is the line that we come up with, is it really the best fit? That's what we're going to do. So we talked about how to calculate the least squares regression line yesterday. We put uh, our data into L1 and L2. We do stat calc 8, and that gives us the uh, least squares regression line. Now we're going to ask these two questions. Is align the right model to use or would a curve be better and if a line is the right model to use how good is the predictions okay so those are the two questions we're going to talk about and so we talked about in 3.5 we talked about residuals do you guys remember how to calculate a residual yeah how uh i don't remember on the top of my head how do you calculate a residual? Ah, a residual. I'm going to remind you right here. A residual. Resid equals actual y minus predicted y, which is y hat. Y minus y hat. That's how you calculate a residual. Well, what we can do is we can actually make a plot of the residuals. And guess what that plot of the residuals is called? Plot. It's called a residual plot. You're shocked, aren't you? Yes. You should be. All right, we're going to make a residual plot. So a residual plot is a scatter plot that plots the residuals on the vertical axis, whoops, vertical axis, and the explanatory variable on the horizontal axis. All right, so here's a residual plot. This is not the residual plot. This is the original scatter plot, okay? and the line of best fit, the least squares regression line. This is the residual plot. Literally, you guys think about just taking the line and flattening it, that is the residual plot. Because of the fact that all we're doing is looking at the distance that each of these dots is from the line and then putting it on a residual plot, on a scatter plot. So that's the residual plot over there, okay? So do you think that the line fits the data well. So the easy way is just look at the residual plot and go, do I see a curved pattern? If you see a curved pattern, then a curved model would be better. A linear model's not great, okay? So that's basically how this works. On here, you can see that at the beginning, we've got these uh, first dots are above the line when we start on the x-axis and then they go below the line and then they go back above the line. So it's kind of not a great fit here. It seems like our prediction line is not doing the best job of making good overall predictions. Okay, so in this positive, negative, positive relationship, it looks like a different model, a curved model would be better, okay? That's how we can tell if a residual plot is a good model or not. All right, so moving on. Da -da -da -da. Here is the scatter plot. You guys have seen this already. This is the one of the Ford F-150 trucks with the price and the miles driven. We've been working with this all week. So here's the scatter plot. Here's the least squares regression line. Again, all I'm doing is I'm looking at the distance of each dot to the line, and I'm straightening this line out, and that gets me the residual plot. If you guys look at this, you can kind of see the pattern. So you see these two dots on the this, on this scatter plot right here? They're right there. And then like these two dots right here, they're right here. <laughs> You see it? And then this dot that's really close to this line, it's this one right here. The residual plot zooms in. That's why that one looks so far away. So the residual plot zooms in and you can see the distance even better. Notice the y-axis scale is zero. Anything below is a negative residual. Anything above is a positive residual just like it would be over here. These all have negative residuals underneath the line. These all have positive residuals above the line. But it's a super zoomed in section of the scatter plot, okay? 
So, what do you guys think? Does that have a curved pattern? The residual plot over here. Do you see a curved pattern at all? No. So is the linear model good? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Very good. That's exactly how this works, you guys. It's super easy. So looking at the scatter plot, the line does, sorry, that should be blue and underlined. The line does seem to be a good fit for the association. And you can see that because there is no curved pattern in the residual plot. So the linear model would be doing a very good job, okay? All right, so here's how you interpret a residual plot. If there is no leftover curved pattern, then the residual or the regression model is appropriate. If there is no curved pattern, the regression model is appropriate. But if there is a leftover curve pattern, the linear model, the regression model, is not appropriate. Curve, bad linear model. You should get a curved pattern for that, or curved model for that. No curve, good linear model. Does that make sense? Easy enough? Perfect. All right. Moving on then. Here's a new example. Uh, this is the soda can and the tapping on the soda can thing. Um, so here's the residual plot from that data. Do you guys think the linear regression model is a good fit based on that residual plot? No. Is the linear model good based on that residual plot? Basically, I'm looking at this pat or this uh, this um, residual plot, and I'm thinking to myself, is there a curved pattern? Do you guys see a curved pattern? Yeah. Yeah. Where? Where do you see the curve? I feel like it would be. You feel like it would be? Yeah, I don't see it. You don't see. Yeah, you don't see a curved pattern, Logan. No. Does anyone else see a curved pattern? This is one of this is one of those blot tests, right? You, show like a blot picture and you're like, what do you see? Apparently, um, apparently some of us see curves. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so this one, let's see what it says. Um, so the fact that they're lined up vertically is just because of the way the data was done. Again, remember we were tapping on the cans for either zero, four, eight, or 12 seconds. That's why they are all lined up vertically. But there is not a curved pattern, so there is no leftover curve pattern, so the least squares regression line is a good fit. You don't have to write that whole thing, but basically there is no curved pattern, so LSRL, least squares regression line, is appropriate. We have a good linear fit. There's not a curved pattern there. It's just scattered-ish. Some below, some above. I do agree that I do see vertical lines, but that's just because of the way the data was taken. No curve, good. Curve, bad. We don't like curves. Cool, cool? Huh? Okay, I don't know what that was. Alrighty. So, that's how we can tell if the linear model is a good fit. Now we're going to talk about two things that we can interpret to see how good is the model. The first thing is the standard deviation of the residuals. Do you guys remember what standard <laughs> deviation is back from chapter one? It's the middle and then you go back. It's the distance from the mean, all right? So the standard deviation is the average distance from the mean. The standard deviation of the residuals is the average distance from the line. It's the average distance that the data is from the line. So the standard deviation of the residuals 
is a measure of the size of the typical residual. It's an average residual value. So S measures the typical distance between the actual Y and the predicted Y. It's basically the average distance that each of those data values are from the line. So if you think about that, do you think we want a big number or a small number? Very good, Sophia. We want a small number because we want the average distance between our actual value and our predicted value to be small, okay? We want it to be very small. So here's the formula. Okay, so everybody time out. I don't want you to look at that formula ever again, okay? So like, don't worry about it. We care about interpreting the number. You never have to calculate this number. It's not even a number that your calculator is going to calculate for you. You just need to understand what it is. It's the average distance from the line for each of the data values. And we just need to talk about how to interpret it. So don't worry about the formula at all. You won't see it on your homework. You won't see it on a quiz or a test or ever again. Okay. All right. So this is, again, the Ford F-150 data. The standard deviation of the residuals is 5,740. So what does that mean? The average residual is 5,740 dollars. Okay, that's what that basically means. The average residual is $5,740. What exactly does that mean? The typical, the typical distance between the actual price and predicted price is $5,740. This is the typical difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So if I look at the distance of every single one of these, and I average those distances, I'll get about 5,700. Okay? So... Is that line a good prediction line? How good is it? Well, it's getting a prediction that's within about $5,700. And when we're talking about prices of vehicles, that's not that bad, okay? So we're, that's pretty good. If, we're, if our prediction is within about $5,700, that's, that's a fairly decent line, okay? You have to think about the context of the problem to decide on if it's a good fit or not. All right, so that's how standard deviation of the residuals works. All right, the final thing is this thing called the coefficient of determination, and that is R squared. The coefficient of determination, and that is R squared. R squared is the coefficient of determination. And here's what it tells us. The coefficient of determination measures the percent of the variation in the response variable that is accounted for by the least squares regression line. Again, we don't care about how to calculate it, even though I am going to tell you a little secret. Do you guys remember R, the correlation, tells us strength and direction? If I take R and I literally <laughs> square it, multiply it by itself, I get this number. So R and R squared are literally mathematically related in that way. So this is just the squared value of the correlation. This is really fancy words to say this. These are the percent of values that are good predictions. These are the percent of values that are good predictions, okay? So let's look at an example. 
The R squared value for the Ford, whoops, the R squared value for the Ford F-150 data is 66%. That is 66% of the variability in the price can be accounted for by the linear model. What does that mean? Here's what that actually means. 66% of the predictions are good. So I know that the, the linear model is a good fit because the residual plot said so. I know my predictions are within 5,700 because of the S. And then this R squared tells me that 66% of the predictions are pretty good, meaning that they're pretty close, close enough. So should I use that model to predict prices? 66%, eh, that's not terrible. I'm just talking about price, so it's not a big deal. It's just cars. If I was talking about life or death, I might not want to. Um, that means that the remaining 34% are because of other things. The, those other predictions are not great because of other reasons. All right, last, uh, last example here is, again, back to the can tapping example. So we use the least squares regression line to make predictions for the soda remaining in the can based on the tapping time. Here's the R squared value, 0.85. So what does that mean? That means 85%, I just take that R squared value and turn it into a percent, 85% of the variation, of the variation in soda remaining, that's always going to be your Y value right there, soda remaining, that guy right there is your Y value. 85% of the variation in soda remaining is accounted for by the regression line. Okay, so let's think about that for a second. 85% of our predictions are good. Is this a good prediction line? Seems kind of okay enough, right? 85% of our predictions are good. And I'm literally just talking about tapping on a can and soda exploding. So it's not like, again, it's not life or death. 85% of our predictions are pretty good. That's a fairly decent line, okay? And that's how we interpret R squared. Cool? Very good on that. All right, so final thing. What's the relationship between S and R squared? Here it is. The standard deviation of the residuals tells us the typical difference in our prediction and our actual value. So we want that close to zero, okay? We want our predictions to be close to our actual values. So we want the average residual to be zero, okay? R squared does not have units, just like correlation R does not have units. And it is a value that tells us what percent of our data is a good fit, and we want that close to 100%. To recap, do we want S to be big or small? Big. We want S to be... Small. We want it as close to zero as possible because that's how far our predictions are, are off. Do we want R squared to be big or small? Big, because that's what percent of our predictions are good. Okay? So there you go. There's a recap of all the things. All right, let's look at this example. Ah, don't show the answers. Can you predict the battery life of a tablet using the price? Using data from a sample of 15 tablets, the least squares regression line is y hat equals 4.67 plus 0 0.0068x, and that was calculated using x is the price in dollars and y is the battery life in hours. Here's the residual plot. Question number one. Do you think that the linear model is a good fit? Look at the residual plot. Do you see a curved pattern here? No. So is the linear model good? Yes, perfect. 
Exactly. There you go. Because there is no curved pattern, the linear model is good. That's very fancy words to say what I just said. Because there is no curved pattern, the linear model is good. No curved pattern, linear model is good. <coughs> because there is no curved pattern, the linear model is good. The linear model is good. It is an appropriate model. Woohoo! Yay! Go linear model! Yes! All right, but it's good, but how good? All right, so let's look at this. Interpret the value S is 1.21 for this model. All right, so what does that mean? That means that the typical... No, I don't even... I don't like that sentence. So here's what it means. The typical... The typical variation in prediction is 1.21 hours. Okay, what that means is that when I use this line to make a prediction, I'm going to be off by about 1.21 hours. Is that a good amount to be off if you're trying to predict how long a battery is going to last not it's not great it's not it's it's honestly not great so that kind of makes me feel a little iffy about this this line this line is maybe not the best prediction model so now look at the r squared value r squared is 34.2 percent that means, guys, that only 34.2% of the variability is accounted for by this line. Only 34.2% of the variability is accounted for by this line. That means that only 34% of our predictions are good. Is this a good fit? Not great, okay? Is the linear model appropriate? Yes, the residual plot said so. There's not another model that would be better. A curved model wouldn't be better, but it's just this prediction line isn't really the best way to predict this answer, okay? So we might need to do something different. We might need to, I don't know, use some sort of computer to do predictions, I don't know. But So this is maybe not the best line ever. What questions do you guys have about any of that? Yes, ma'am. How did you know to use hours on number two when interpreting for Oh, that is a wonderful question. How did I know to use hours? Um, so when I'm looking at the residuals, I'm looking at the actual Y value minus the predicted Y value. So I'm looking at the Y values every time. So I'm going to use whatever variable the Y is in. I'm going to use whatever units the Y is using. That was a great question. What other questions? Yes, Juliet. Yes. Thank you. What else? Perfect. <laughs>